my godfather said to me something when I was 16 and I was at my birthday. He gave me a card and the card said, uh, Francis, in your life, do what makes your heart come alive. Otherwise, you'll be poor all your life. And I was 16. Wow. Wow, that's, and that's uh, I did weird. everything except wow. that, you know? Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I want to make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. Hey, everybody. So our guest today is Francis Pichet. Francis is a mindset coach, which, of course, I love. He's also a speaker, and now he is becoming a documentarian. I met Francis this past... Well, I was introduced to him, so I communicated with him through social media or through email and whatnot um, for a while. I, I met him through um, uh, another Tough Talks guest, Gary Mahler, who's also who's a coach and great buddy of mine. And uh, Gary coaches Francis. But Francis and I both attended uh, an event this past summer in Portugal called A-Fest. It's a Mind Valley sponsored or hosted event. And the A appropriately stands for Awesomeness. Awesomeness Fest. That is a perfect name for that event. And I met, uh, I met so many amazing people there. Um, and it's, a, you know, what that is, well, we'll, we'll probably talk about it, Francis and I. Uh, he's one of the many remarkable, remarkably spectacular humans that I met at this event, and he's up to some fascinating things. His whole thing is resilience. Francis is all about resilience. Like, that's Francis's brand, you know, is that, that's his website, which is resilienceelement.com, and it's what, you know, I, I think, we'll find out, but uh, what his documentary is likely to be entitled is, like, the resilience element, the element of resilience, and how to create a badass life through that. So... Uh, I think you'll enjoy his French Canadian accent, <laughs> but what I'm sure you'll enjoy much more than that is his vibe. Pay attention to that. That's the first thing I ever noticed when I met him. <clears throat> is oh my god, it's like I felt it. Like oh, this dude is vibing high. That th this is a powerful cat. So you're gonna enjoy him. Let's. Uh, he's waiting for us. So let's go find him. And here he is, folks. Francis Pichet, my man. Woo! And I'm with CD. What's up, brother? Oh, you, man. man, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be with you. I, I know we're going to jam. I know we're going to have a great time. And that's all that's all we need. Yeah, we're going to have a great time serving people. And, and we're going to be able to do that very effortlessly, I suspect, through just having them hear about all the stuff that you're up to. You are one busy mofo right now. You're all over the damn world. Where the hell in the, in the world are you? I, it's impossible to track you. <laughs> I love that. I love that question. That's the best question I've ever been asked on a <laughs> podcast because my friends are starting to ask the same question. Like, where are you now? Are yeah. you in Vancouver? Are you in LA? Are you in Europe? I am in Vancouver and then I'm going to visit. I say visit because uh, I'm applying for a visa and I'm going to stay in the US just for the, as a visitor at first. And then as soon as I have my visa for five years, I'll stay a little bit longer in Huntington Beach. This yes. Yeah. And uh, travel around and also continue to travel in Europe uh, and even maybe Oman, you know, or in the Middle East, which I hope you're going to go to. I'm already signed up. There you go. So just to let people know what we're talking about there, uh, you and I met at an event called A-Fest. Mm -hmm. I think you're actually like the fourth person I'm interviewing on Tough Talks from A-Fest. And, and that's a testimonial to how remarkably interesting that event is. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's mm -hmm. so so a fest is an event. And I think people have heard this before um, that is put on by a company called Mind Valley. And it happens once a year. Now, the next one will be in Oman. And it's a group of about 300 people from all over the world who are globally conscious uh, difference makers. Yes. Right. Yes. And we also had a connection before that. And we happened to meet only at that event. And uh, we have a, a brother in common, which is my coach, Gary Mahler. Gary Mahler, who yeah. is going to be uh, appearing on top, who we recorded uh, his interview, and that'll be coming up soon also, your coach, Gary Mahler. It's a fascinating mm -hmm. interview. Yeah, that's right. So we met prior, well, we were in, introduced, but then we actually really met in um, Portugal. 
And I have to say, and I'm pleased to say that, that uh, I've been following you, CD, for a while because I love what you, I know you don't want to talk about you, but I love your daily dose every day. And uh, I know that you wrote a chapter with Gary yeah. on a book. And I'm trying to remember the name is When All When Boat All Boat Rise. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. That's and right. uh, your chapter was to me uh, one of the best. Like, I, and that's I think how I started to connect with you because I said mm. I love this dude. I really uh-huh. love this dude. And and Gary always talks about you. So, you know, there you go. That's and then we happened to meet in Portugal. What a <laughs> Portugal. good place to meet. <laughs> what a great place to meet. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, your uh, brand is resilience. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. name of your website, right? Which resilience I will element the, yep. the right the resi- or no no just resilience element element yes not the it's resilience element dot com yes. now okay so and your mindset coach as I mentioned in the introduction and you deal in, uh, enormously with with that with the the you know the mental game of life right yes. and uh, so one of your taglines is reactivate your passion. All right. Mm-hmm. I have a question for you though, that your logo is, is like you're playing off the periodic chart, right? Which, is, which I think is pretty cool. So that's yeah. a capital R lowercase E, like it looks like an element, right? Resilience, mm-hmm. resilience element. Yes. Uh, but then you have the number 75, right? And those numbers <laughs> are like, I believe the number, like in the periodic chart, if I'm remembering from high yeah, school. That's the atomic number. Yeah. Yes. Right. So the number of atoms in that particular element, right? Or is that, is that okay. So what's, what's significance of number 75? Well, I can tell you a little bit about the logo. The logo actually came out of an exercise that uh, Gary gave me at the time, and I hated it. <laughs> it was, okay, so you got to do nothing for three days. And I, I, I wasn't ready for that. I thought, hey, I just told you that I'm ready to do something in my life. I want to take action. He's like, yeah, this because this is how Gary asked me the question. He's like, okay, I'm going to ask you to do something that you won't like. Do you want to do it? <laughs> That would, that would be your type of question. See, yeah. I knew you would ask that type of question. So, so you're asking, okay, I'll do it. And, he's, and then when he asked me to do nothing, uh, he said, well, he, he told me you're going to do it. And, uh, but the most important thing was that he asked me to also think about this question, which was project yourself in five years from now, and I want you to write something on your agenda. And on that, on that page, I want you to write this. And I said, what, what is it? He said, I want you to write, this is the day that I die. And then, so what are you going to do with this time, Francis? And at the time, you know, there's like many of us, we had fears. I, I had a, some sort of a project which was aligned with my strength, but not fully extending my passion to them. To, and, uh, and then there was the other dream that I thought, well, if I only have five years, what's, what's the point really? Mm. Who do I want to become? Who do I want to be with? And the exercise also implied that I wouldn't do anything. Like this is pretty self-explanatory, like do nothing, but not, not doing a journal, not doing anything like that. So I had so many ideas that I could, couldn't jot down. And uh, we can talk about like what happened in those three days. But the, the reality is that when I was able to jot that down, I was fascinated by people that are, have achieved their dreams. And I also thought, well, from what I know so far of all the books and all the podcasts and everything, it wasn't always easy. <laughs> it wasn't. So there's, you know, you look at the people on the top, but they had a pivotal moment where they could have, you know, given up on everything. And I wanted to know what's that mind- mindset and share it. Mm. And uh, at the time I had a, some sort of a, I've, I've watched some people talking about that abundance and it called the uh, abundance code or abundance, abundance factor. So I looked online and that was taken. So then I thought, well, this is kind of an element. This is something that we all have. We can reactivate it. And I feel it. And so then I started to search and it was available. And then the next thing was, well, what if I just have an acronym of RE, what does that mean? And so I'm searching and then I see this means rhenium in the periodic table. Uh-huh. And then I looked at the properties of rhenium, and rhenium at the time was the element with the highest boiling point of all the elements. <laughs> so then I thought, this wow, is the most resilient so of all. So wow. I, and then to realize hmm. that this is used to launch rocket, this is a, a rare element. Well, and then a byproduct, which I thought, you know, resilience is a byproduct. You can't, if I say, Chris, describe resilience. Well, you're going to say, well, th- what does that, how do you generate resilience? And so it's not just, you know, here you go, just white 
And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that you need to have in order to build your resilience. So I felt this is a byproduct. And then to answer your question about 75, then I thought, well, what can I do with this? Can I just keep the integrity of the resilience element, Rhenium? And then I felt, well, you know, the people are always talking about six or seven elements of uh, categories of life. And, and I felt, well, yeah, I can definitely have seven categories of life. I feel that resilience is something you need in all of the elements. Would you say that, you know, when you go to work, you're not bringing personal life with you or like vice versa. There's always business involved, relationship involved, uh, your friends, your family, uh, your mental toughness, everything. So I felt, well, yeah, re resilience is in all the uh, categories of life. And then I felt, okay, so if this is a five, if there's a, if there's a five, what can I do with this? And then I started to jot down the byproducts of resilience and I came up with some sort of a formula of five, uh, five components and the components are clarity, conviction, uh, certainty, commitment, and courage. And I felt that if you have hold all on, of hold that, on, will you repeat those five? A absolutely. Little, uh, slowly. <clears throat> yeah, I will. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so the, uh, the first element is clarity. Cause I asked myself, I said, okay, so let's say you want to build the biggest dream ever or your biggest goal. What would you need? What would you need to, in order to achieve that? Or if you look at highly successful people or, uh, performant, what, what do they have? And mm -hmm. one of the first components for me was, well, they know where they're going. It's clear. It's clarity. So they need to know what's, what's the goal. You know, do you want to go to France or you want to go to Rome? Uh, and so, and you need to have some sort of a clarity in your mind about that. So that was the first component. Okay. Uh, the second was conviction because I felt that for all the stories that I've gathered so far, you talk to Olympic athletes, you talk to business people, single moms, and you know they have a big project in mind. Well, it takes a lot of reasons why, and it takes a lot of conviction. And if you don't have that, usually you're gonna give up. So you can even think of Steve Jobs. You know, if you know the reasons, I don't, I can't paraphrase his quote, but when he was talking to, I think Stanford, he said, you know, if you, if you really, you, do you know that quote? What I'm referring about? Nope. No. But it was basically saying, you know, if you, uh, if you really follow your heart and you, you're, you have a lot of conviction, you can go through any obstacles. So that's the second component. Beautiful. The third one is uh, certainty. And the best analogy I can do with that is think about the kids that are their objective. Let's say their objective is to walk. So they're looking at everyone. Everyone's walking. There's some sort of 100% certainty that they're going to walk. Are they going to say, well, you know, I've tried a million times. Mm. I'm going to crawl. I, I know you guys are walking, but I'm going to crawl. In their mind, they know 100% that they will walk, so they never give up. So that's part of resilience. And I think that certainty is a, is a special beast because I think that certainty from my spiritual side now is knowing that at the end, you're going to be taken care of, is mm -hmm. knowing at the end that the universe is benevolent. Like the Einstein said, the best question you can ask yourself is, is the universe friendly? And if you know that the universe is friendly, that means that you might have a goal and you have to be willing to be detached from the outcome to know that at the end, hundred percent, you're going to have the best outcome. So that's, that's where, you know, it's not just the exact same precise picture of what's going to happen, but it's knowing that if it hasn't happened yet, uh, something else better will come. And so it's almost like, and I'd love to use the, the book, the surrender experiment by Michael AJ Singer, let life, you flow and eventually you just know that you're going to be taken care of. So that's certainty. Wow. Um, the fourth one is commitment. So, you know, you know where you're going, you know why you're doing it. You have a very good sense that, you know, you're going to be taken care of. You have a hundred percent certainty. Now you got to take action. <clears throat> and uh, I think that when people are thinking about commitment, I feel that they have sometimes too big commitments. And there's no problem to have a big goal, but when your commitment is, as an example, well, it's the beginning of the year. Uh, I want to go to the gym. I'm going to go three times this, this week, and I'm going to do 90-minute sessions all the time. And you would ask them, what was the last time you went to the gym? Well, it was four, four months ago. Okay. Uh, how many times did you go to the gym that, at that time? Well, only once. So you're telling me that now all of a sudden you're going to have three times 90 minutes this week, and you're going to do it all year? How about you just do five minutes? How about you just go five minutes? Like just that and uh, see where that goes. The reality is it's going to be easy to achieve a small commitment and then you're going to do it so many times. You're going to probably have way more 
fun and you're going to extend your sessions to more time and you will feel good about it because you can have a little check mark and say done. Mm. Like I've mm. done something for me. So commitment to me is small steps to that leads to your big goal. And uh, the fourth, the fifth one is courage. Cause I feel that at the end of the day, you can do all of these things. You can, you know, you know where you're going, you know why you're doing it. You have a, 100% certainty in your mind and your heart that it's going to be great. You're doing all the actions, all the commitments, but then you're going to hit the wall. And that's where usually most people stop is, is that they don't have enough courage to continue. And to me, courage is there's different ways and strategies you can enhance that. Like it's all about your vibration. It's all about doing something you love. Like maybe uh, talking to your friends, talking to your coach, social connections are really bringing happiness up. Uh, you, you might just follow your bliss, uh, listen to podcasts, like mm -hmm. listen to, so now it's all strategies about, okay, so this is a really dark time for me right now. Let's bring some more sun rays and uh, let's continue. And that's, that, those are the five components. So clarity, yeah. conviction, certainty, commitment, and courage. That's it. That's beautiful. I love all of that. So let's talk a little bit more about some of those. I want to, I want to ask you about uh, actually, several of them um because you said some a lot there and it is fascinating let's just start with the courage one so courage is um it's a mindset yeah courage yeah yeah right, right. it's, it's yeah. a it's an emotional state mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. where does it come from hmm it's funny i've never had that question i think I would say I would say that environment has a big effect on courage. I mm -hmm. think that there's an inner courage that we have, and sometimes because the obstacles are so big or we fell so many times, we we're a little bit depressed or we don't think that we're good enough. <clears throat> and I think that the environment has a big effect on that. So I'll give you an example, and that was fascinating to me because it was years ago. I went to. Uh, uh, an event and it was uh, the president of D wave who is the at the time was the president of the quantum computer company and he said something fascinating because he said you know our computer is so fast so fast you know it millions of times faster than any other computer because it's in a chamber and it's you know isolated from the noise and the and at a special temperature and then he said what's even more fascinating is that when we put that computer outside this chamber, mm. guess how much faster this computer is? Or like, oh, I don't know. He's like, well, it, it's acting like a normal computer. We're like, what? Really? So physically, right now, this chip that exists, if you put it in a different environment, it's not going to be a million times faster. And I feel that this is the same thing in our, in our life. So if, we, if we're not in the right environment, mm. we're not going to be our to our highest potential we're not going to have maybe enough courage we're not going to act faster stronger better that we could because we have that potential it's just a matter of dumping that person in the right environment and or maybe putting yourself out of a bad environment to really raise your vibration if you will mm. <clears throat> so you also so you know uh I, I referenced it briefly in your introduction but i feel like i maybe i skipped over it where we, I, now I skipped over it here with you and I, I want to so just backtrack a, a tiny bit and then I want to get back into it. I want to talk about certainty because you said some fascinating things there uh, about the universe and Einstein and all. But uh, what you like, now, now I'm going up to the big picture here, okay? So we're stepping out of that conversation, conversation for just a moment, all right? And transcending, going out of the content into the process here, all right? The process of Francis Pichet. Of all the things you could be doing with your life, why this? <sighs> well, I didn't expect that I would be uh, emotional on that one, but I think um, <clears throat> I, I, I don't, to me, it's the Chris, there's uh, really when I ask myself, like, why, why am I here on earth? I, I love, I love people. I love raising the level of vibration or energy in the room. I, uh, and I'm, I just want to, do the best I can with my highest potential. That's really, that's really what I want to do. And then if I can do that, then I want other people to do that because the, the feeling is so amazing. And you're right. I mean, I can do so many other things. And my godfather said to me something when I was 16 and I was at my birthday. 
He gave me a card and the card said, uh, Francis, in your life, do what makes your heart come alive. Otherwise you'll be poor all your life. Wow. And I was 16. Wow. Wow, that's, and that's uh, I did weird. everything except wow. that, you know, <laughs> just wow. first job. You know, you can do what you love. Your heart's excited, but then you have a multinational company that gives you a lot more in an environment where, you know, you're selling semiconductors and passing components. I hated it. But, hey, you know, you can be on the, on the corporate ladder. You can be a p- potential executive. You've got a, a bonus. And I, I hated it for four years. And my flame just diminished and diminished and diminished for four years in a row until I got the bonus. And then I really wanted to get out of this to realize that the day that the week that I started the new job, which was at Xerox, which I was excited because now it's transaction. It's not, it's fun. You're talking to people. And uh, that same week was the week where my fiance at the time decided to pull off the marriage three, uh, yeah, the winning day, three months before the day. Wow. And so that kind of hit me in the face big time. Wow. And I started the spirituality, uh, being more spiritual. First book was The Alchemist. But, you know, to, to answer your question, yes. I mean, I can do a lot of different things. And right now I can go back to corporate and I, I, I can say that I've invested so much of my energy and money into this. I sold a condo five years ago. I almost sold my car this week or last week. I mean, I'm all in and uh, <clears throat> I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be in because I think that I would be dead inside every day going back to corporate and I would know damn right that I'm not using my full potential, that I would give up on a dream and I would say, well, I guess I'm just going to be on a rat race. I guess that's what it is. Two weeks of vacation and asking for permission every time and uh, feeling bad to ask for three weeks when you can and, uh, I, that's not the life I want. And I know that some people can have that. And there's the good news, Chris, is that now there are so many better companies that understand what the employees need and the flexibility that they, they mm-hmm. must have so that they perform better. That's awesome. Uh, I've never had that type of company <laughs> that I work for. And uh, that's why I want to disrupt that in a way. I want to, I want to disrupt this so that people are really living their full potential and not be afraid of all the social pressure that we have to say you you should stay small. Mm. Dangerous out there. And uh, yeah. You know, you referenced one of my favorite books of all time by Paulo Coelho. I don't even know how to say his last name. Do you? (laughs) Paulo Coelho. 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 The Alchemist. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So what's that book about to you? When you explain to somebody, it says, uh, you talk about the book, The Alchemist, and say, oh, what, what, what's The Alchemist about? What's your answer? Yeah. There's, there's different things that comes to mind. First, uh, that we have all our legend, so our calling, our mission. I think at the time, for me, that, that's the beauty about The Alchemist. You can reread it, and every time you reread it, there's always something new that you haven't seen, and that brings a new perspective in your life. So at the time, for me, what was good was that section of the book when he lost everything and he still continued. And I felt I lost everything. And mm. so it kind of gave me the courage to continue knowing that, you know, I followed the sign. This is kind of meant to be. So that was, uh, that was to me something very important. And at the same time, I am thankful that I met um, a sales instructor. Man, this is a, uh, I'm more emotional than I thought his name, his name is Bob Smith. And, uh, you know, that was just in that couple of weeks after it was over or a couple months. And I was holding on to anything that I love. And to me, I love sales. I love people. So I had a sales training and uh, the guy that was helping to facilitate this training was an old guy, 70 year old Bob Smith, you know, you know, good voice, radio morning voice. And, and, uh, <laughs> And then I remember he said something at the end. He's like, but you know what, guys? At the end, what's important in all of this is to have fun. (laughs) And I fell in love with him. I said, yeah, I love that. And so I kind of skipped out in my mind of all the bad stuff that happened in in my life. And then I went to see him and I said, hey, Bob, I just want to thank you. I I, want to really thank you for everything you've done this week. I I loved it. and, And... I don't know if it was 
something uh, that needed to happen from God or whatever, but he looked at me right in the eyes and it was one of the first time that I saw someone very, with a very intense look. And he said, you know, I've seen you Francis this week. And, you know, as soon as he said that, I'm like, does he know that you know, my wedding is canceled? And that was exactly in that same week that it was supposed to happen. And he mm. said, and, uh, you know, I just want you to know something and I'm listening. And he puts his, his hand on my shoulder and he looked very intense. And he said, you can do anything you want in your life. It's just up to you. <laughs> so I'm like, ooh, okay. And that was at the same time I was reading The Alchemist. And then, so I felt that I could do anything. And wow. still, I fell in the trap of following the money versus the heart. Uh, but now it's, it's over. I'm, I'm just following my heart right now. You know, I wrote, um, <clears throat> you just said something really interesting. Everything you're saying is interesting. The, 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 but that, that last thing uh, stood out for me, because, which is a follow uh, your, your heart versus the money. And um, I wrote a, I wrote a blog a, a year, two years ago, it was, and it just recycled and came out this week. And it's something, I think it was entitled, College Seniors Do Not Get a Job. And that's a playful title. Uh, and the, the message is about um, creating an amazing life as opposed to going out and just getting a job to survive, right? So, mm -hmm. it's, so it's really the, the distinction for this particular blog post is thriving versus surviving. Yes. Right. And I feel like, you know, the millennial generation, or not even that, just younger generations are more committed uh, these days than, than I think ever to, to, to following their hearts, but not at the expense of money. And that's one of the other points that I made, because that's some of the reaction that I got from like some, some of the older people that follow my blog, like, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's great. Just let the, let the kids just stay home and we'll support them while they find meaning. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. so that inspired. Oh, by the way, I love that. So, cheers. Yeah. So, you, we'll be doing tough talks. We have Moscow Mules and Jägermeister, which has water in it. That's which how we were all. Yeah, mine's coffee. <laughs> it looks like Jäger, though. It could pass as Jäger, yeah. couldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, inspired another a follow up blog. That those comments. I got two of them. One one guy just wrote BS. I'm sure he bounced off the list. He just said BS. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else bs i don't know you should laugh but yeah but it's fine it's great you know you yeah. you're in you're out it's but always the, it's like yeah but so what's interesting to me though is that there's this uh, there's this inherent assumption that it's either either or kind of thinking mm -hmm. like i'm either going to create meaning in my vocation or i'll make money and and that's that's stupid to me yeah. Uh, it, it, it doesn't jive with my observations of people when they're performing at peak because um, it's a both end logic thing here. Like when I, there's a book that I read when I was coming out of college that really inspired the hell out of me, which is called Do What You Love, The Money Will Follow. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And I, I believe that that was written by a woman named Dr. Marcia Sinatar, I think. Do What You Love, The Money Will Follow. And, and I don't really like that title because it implies, uh, I love the book and the message, but, to, but the title implies that it, like the whole, it'll follow like at some point, you know, just, just hang in there. And maybe that's true for some, but, but does that have to be true? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be true. Yeah. Right. For bringing that distinction. Cause I think that to me, one of the biggest thing that I've learned this year, especially, you know, meeting you, meeting other people, uh, there's, there's so different things that we can talk about. Um, I think that you, we can create anything. It's a matter of being resourceful. And mm -hmm. so uh, a matter of, and I know you work a lot on language. And so a lot of people would say, like you said, you know, they don't put them together. So you can say, I do what I love and I'm making money. Yes. Or let's say. I let's make say, shitloads of money doing what I love. Exactly. And you can, and, and a, a lot of times, you know, you would hear people and, you know, it's just a matter of reframing that and helping them, right? They would say, I'd love to go to Portugal, but that's, that's the problem, but I don't have the money. Yeah. So that is basically just killing the whole thing. You're the, the, the best word to say is not, but is to use and, and I don't have the money. Now the next question is how do I create it? How do I create this possibility? And, and when you're in that possibility zone, which I know you said something, but I read your email this morning and it was about possibility. I don't, 
<laughs> but uh, it's, it's being a creator. And when you're a creator, there's so many different possibilities. You can uh, ask a friend, you know, and that's what I started to do this year because instead I was very frustrated, even now, building a big project that I'm sure we'll talk about. And, you know, I have business partners with different stakes and I was waiting and I, I found myself in the same type of zone that I was when I thought that I would be happy when things are happening. And then I thought, no, 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 no. Like you have got to change it. And you're depend now you're putting yourself dependent of a situation in order to be happy. And I felt, okay, no, 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 I'm going to use this and the word and I'm going to create instead. And what happened is, Thankfully, because we, we also, I'm sure you love that book, The Surrender Experiment. I felt, well, there's probably a reason I don't know what it is, but now it's asking me to step out of outside my comfort zone. Thank you. And thank you for this breakdown. Now let's figure out a solution. And what happened is that now I have more partners and these partners are big, putting the team at a higher level of, of uh, manifestation. So yeah. that, that was thanks to the delay that frustrated me before and mm. instead of saying well i'd love to do this but you know i this thing hasn't happened yet or i'm not happy because i i decided to change my language and create and i think that's very 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 important so it I, is I, I, that's I mean, amazing that, there's a mantra that i love and I, I use constantly which is every set of circumstances can be leveraged for gain if viewed masterfully exactly right and I, and I and i love hearing you use the word create and and create which is so um, a, a question that I love to ask myself after something goes wrong. I'm using air quotes if you're just listening to the podcast because I don't believe philosophically that anything could ever go wrong. Mm -hmm. But we're conditioned to believe that that is, that is actually an interpretation of when we don't get what we want, we think that that's wrong. <clears throat> so I'd like to ask the question in those circumstances, what can I create out of this? what magic can I create out of this exact set of circumstances that wouldn't be possible to create if it wasn't for these circumstances, uh -huh. right? That's brilliant. We have uh, a couple more things that I really want to make sure we get to. Uh, you mentioned when you were going through those five elements and, and you, met, you were talking about certainty and, and, I, you, know, you're, and you used the analogy of uh, a baby learning to walk. That was really powerful. I love, I'm gonna use, I'm totally stealing that from you <laughs> because that's cool as shit. Like, like, beginner humans <laughs> it's like the natural state is of course i'm going to do this baby and uh human in training <laughs> it's it, like the ones that the it, carts you get the grocery. well actually actually i think we're the ones in training now as adults to go <laughs> yeah. back and learn from from the baby who hasn't learned to freaking doubt himself yet right we, we're the trainers we're in training now unlearning doubt mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay because that baby's like i'm, I'm, I'm fucking walking <laughs> exactly <laughs> there's no question like, it's getting say, done <laughs> yeah yeah you're, you're not gonna have yeah. uh, you know yeah nobody's gonna say, are you sure because you know it hurts it really hurts. <laughs> no, you, you might know, not want to do that it might not be for you <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we, we and yeah. we can hear that that's another and, subject and what if you screw up uh, mm -hmm. you know what will people think of you yeah. Right. And all that, um, all the, the uh, self consciousness, self inquiries that would have us pause, that would have us wait, that would have us hesitate, that would have us ruminate ad nauseum, as opposed to just fucking move. Mm -hmm. Just go. <laughs> yeah. Go get it. Get on after. I love that. That's certainty. You know, and, and I, 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 um, I really do believe that that is our natural state, right? That until we're educated on how to entertain the construct of failure. Failure is a construct. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just a concept. It's an idea. It's a way of interpreting a particular outcome, which is, again, when you don't get what you want uh, or, or what you sought for or what you went for. When it doesn't occur on your timetable or your schedule, then you know, we've learned to call that a failure. <clears throat> and failure is um, unfamiliar. It is a foreign construct until, right, until we learn it. So in the absence of awareness of the existence of failure, we have that abundant mindset. That, that is our natural state. We have, the, the, the world is just a field of infinite possibilities, and we are in that certainty. Now, let's yeah. go back to something else that you said about May certainty. I just say something quickly yes. on that? It doesn't I, have to yeah. be quick. Yeah, well, because the best 
one of the person that I'm most inspired about failure. And I think sometimes we even put like the failure as a bad word. Like it's what, welcome. It. It's, it's a, why don't you say that failure equals joy as an example? Why not? Mm. Like we can create that if we want. It's almost like, yeah, but failure is really about, you know, the results and it's just a result. And so we're saying, yeah, failure is bad, but we're just going to say it's result. So now how about this? Like I'm thinking of Sarah Blakely that, you know, is the first billionaire woman that created Spanx. And, you know, she was such an example of people knocking on doors, never giving up. What I love about her story is that her dad every day said, what did you fail at today? Oh, wow. I never knew that. <laughs> every day, every day. And she said, it was just to say, what did you learn at the end? But, you know, I, I think what I yeah. love from this story is like, instead of saying, oh, fail, oh, what did you fail at today? It was almost like, hey, how, how good was your day? You know, failure as, this is awesome. Like, yeah. What did you fail at today? And imagine if uh, that was the case for everyone, that mm. failure is very positive. Right. Positive well, again, what, yep, where's, where's the value in this? Where's, what can you create from this? That's brilliant. Thank you. So you have um, a project going on, and I think we should talk about it. Okay? <laughs> You're making a movie. Yes. That's a big deal, dude. So can you tell us about it? Yeah. You know, uh, the idea started, you know, when uh, that was three years ago. And I uh, decided to commit myself to do that before the five-year term. Mm -hmm. and, uh, now uh, before the day you die. Yes, exactly. The, Are you still planning on dying in a couple of years? No, no, oh, okay. no. Oh, you, you, okay. Fully living. And <laughs> I want and I want to create this before the five years mark. And it will happen. That's for sure. It's, it's a certainty. And I even have like another story after that. But the, the reality is, okay, so this, the documentary is to share that mindset of different stories of people that could have given up against all the odds. Mm. And so it really inspired them. And not only inspired them, but also create the habits and the behavior after that so that we can have also experts that are going to say, look, it's not just BS stories. It's true. Like if you really, and that's where the work like yourself bring in the world is so important. So you have experts that are going to say, yeah, you know, you can rewire your brain. It's just a matter of what you tell yourself, your beliefs, your words, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can really do anything you want and using it from different angles. So the spirituality side, the business side, name it. And um, creating a docu-series where people will have the chance on seven days to hear different perspectives, different inspiring stories so that they feel that they can do anything. And also backed up by the science. And then after that, we're creating a transformative technology which will help you to create those habits on a daily basis. So it's a daily dose of resilience. And uh, that's what we're building. And that didn't start that way. Now it's a bigger project. And I finally found the filmmakers and we're talking you know, today and I was just a divine intervention. So going back to the alchemist. Yeah. Going back to that going and, you know, knowing that I remember I, I had a, someone in mind, Louis Schwartzberg, who, uh, oh, was, that guy's so good. Right. <clears throat> time lapse on nature, time lapse on gratitude and everything. <clears throat> and I, I thought, you know, we can do a time lapse on the mindset, just low down at a moment, that pivotal moment, and then expanding it. He was busy. Couldn't make it. And I felt, well, there's going to be some. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You go way too fast with all this important stuff, dude. So, wait, so, so you reach your so, Time lapse, time lapse. <laughs> so you, that's my, part of my job here. It's like slow down. Um, so you reached out to Louis Schwartzberg. Louis Schwartzberg, by the way, if, you're, if you don't know who he is, he's one of the most skilled and talented uh, short film creators. And, and I use uh, his gratitude HD video in my talks constantly it's what and i i've seen it hundreds of times and i cry every time mm -hmm. it's beautiful so by the way so just fyi uh everyone if you want please do go google this or go to youtube and then put in the search box gratitude hd and it's a six minute absolute masterpiece that reminds us that we always have access to that emotional state of gratitude and which is one of the most intelligent states we can ever create. So you reached out to him through his assistant. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you, but, yeah. but you just thought, Oh, that would be cool if we had Louie on the project. Absolutely. So you asked, so that's a yeah. big deal right there. I just want to acknowledge that because a lot of people would think, Oh, this is like the most famous, you know, one of the most famous movie makers and, and perhaps the most famous short filmmaker. Why would he ever work with me? 
I have no, I, I have no limits to what I'm going to ask, you know, and I, I, I feel, <laughs> and I feel that, and I'm saying that on purpose because it was yeah. a channel. Don't know why I talked about it this morning to the filmmakers. I believe that maybe either we interview him because, you know, his parents are survivor of the Holocaust. And that's one. Uh, wow. a really Do not know that. Story as well. And he's working with someone that we'd love to have on a documentary. Her name is Lindsay Sterling. And she is, uh, her story is just incredible. She, you look at her on YouTube, she's got billions of views. And she was told in 2010 at America's Got Talent or something with Piers, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, this guy from UK anyway, just kind of said that her sound sounded like drowned rats being strangled. Oh, that, that, like that. yeah! Wow, yeah, I know so, you're talking about. I'm special yeah. on his name too. But. So maybe it's a good thing that we're not naming, not name yeah. dropping. But all it is is that I, she didn't, she didn't stop. She was thinking about it. She was devastated. And now, years later, imagine the catastrophe that would have happened if she decided to quit. Now we would have missed billions of views of inspiration by her video. And she's a violinist, and she's 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 got a, a great story. A documentary called Brave Enough. She lost her dad. She lost their best friend due to a, uh, a illness. So she is m uh, Miss Resilience. And uh, Louis was working with her on the project. So anyway, w I reached out. It didn't work out for now, but we never know. Like, I mean, I, I got a friend that did the Power of the Heart documentary, and he's got a great story about Eckhart Tolle that he wanted to have in this documentary. And at the first, you know, it's always difficult in the beginning, right? Like you're studying, who are you? what's 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 going to happen until you have the momentum so he, he did ask in the beginning if he could have Eckhart Tolle in his uh, movie and Eckhart Tolle I don't know if he's still the manager at the time it said you know what we can only do it if we have 25 percent of the proceed or 50 percent something crazy he's like no I'm not going to do that mm. short story the year uh, months later or a year after Eckhart Tolle happens to be in a house where Batiste the filmmaker was watched the trailer and said I want to be in it. <laughs> and, and, and didn't ask for the proceeds. <laughs> exactly. And so that's, uh -huh. and that's what I've learned this year is that when you can let go and be detached from the outcome, which you know, we can talk hours about that, things are coming your way, not chasing. Let, 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 let's have that be, a, a, we'll probably have to do a second one of these, another a follow up. And, and let's, let's make a note of that is um, what you just said. That'll be our topic du jour for that day which is detachment from outcome. Yeah, and a, and a book, uh, Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita. Is a Bhagavad book. Gita. Yeah, is a great, that just explains it so well. But yeah, so I mean, I'm saying that because uh, at the time I reached out, and now I'm saying it with pure detachment, really, if Louis is in or not, it doesn't matter in that. I'm, I'm so surrendering to what is, and, and I found the filmmakers who are the best people and I met them through divine intervention where I was in Croatia for again for a Mind Valley event you know for all the odds I'm on I'm on a boat the boats just going up and down everybody wants to throw up like and I, I'm good on a boat and I was thinking about that I was thinking about puking and I didn't and then I'm talking to another person she said, hey, oh, what do you do? And I'm talking about the documentary. She said, oh, you should, you should talk to my friends. You should talk to my friends, uh, Renee and Akira. They live in LA. Really? Okay. Kind of forgot about it. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, I got a message on WhatsApp. They're introducing themselves. That's what I, you know, and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to reach out. Forgot about it. Then I'm walking on the street with my friend from Japan uh, who was living in the same place for like, two weeks because we're there for a while and uh he meets akira because they know each other but i don't know that right so i'm talking to, to uh, akira and i said what do you do he's oh i'm a filmmaker and i'm doing this oh really and then i click oh that, those are the same people oh interesting so we're okay let's meet in la that definitely we should meet and then but we, we didn't really worked out a couple days after we're in that big room watching a workshop and there was not enough people, I guess. So they say, hey, you know, guys, why don't you just come to the front and just come closer? Let's, let's just be a little group here. I'm not moving because I'm already in the front. Boom. Akira just comes next to me. He said, hey. I'm like, hey. 
So <laughs> things are happening. They're coming yeah, your way. Right, right. And then, you know, weeks after we meet, we met in LA and it was just divine intervention. Like we realized that everything was just meant to, guys, you should talk. You know, I'm going to send you a little WhatsApp video just to make sure, oh, you forgot. Oh, it doesn't matter. We're just going to make sure you walk at the exact same perfect time so that you, these guys are going to meet and then you're going to introduce each other. And that, that's, and now, and, and, and Renee uh, is an amazing woman that, was a model and she had a brain tumor and imagine like you're you're in that industry where look is very important and all of a sudden your face is down mm. and and she she has an amazing uh story and my partner jason who i know you know jason flores mm -hmm. same thing got paralyzed halfway and you know you talk to the dude he's one of the most inspiring person never complains uh, and they connected. So I was with Jason when I met uh, Renee and Akira, and we fell all in love, and we know that this is meant to be. So now I'm thinking, wow, this, this is even better than I thought. They understand mm. the business model, that what we're doing. They get our own network. I have my own network. It's just magic. And I love that. I forgot to tell you, when you use the word magic, I use magic all the time. I believe in magic. When I went to my first A-Fest, which was uh, 15 months ago, it happened in Sardinia, Italy. <clears throat> Afterwards, I went off into uh, the Greek islands alone with no agenda. And that was my, my birth mom's recommendation. She's in Italy as we speak right now. This is my birth mom, the day we were reunited 11 years ago. And um, for those of you that are listening on the podcast, I just held up my mouse pad here for my computer is a picture of the reunion with my birth mom so i went uh, off she's an intrepid world traveler she's amazing and she said chris after uh, a fest this is what you're doing i'm just telling you this is what you're doing and you're going off into the greek islands with absolutely no itinerary and it was just so magical i have 48 stories of magic 48 distinct stories from like seven days <clears throat> um and the sentence or the phrase that i've crafted that in captures the essence of the experience is this <clears throat> all there is is magic magic is the constant in this equation we call life mm. the variable is my ability to slow down enough and vibe high enough to co-create with it I hope you have a quote somewhere and put Chris Doris because I love this. I'm going to borrow this. You, st you yeah, stay the baby. I'm still in great. <laughs> Roger that. So we didn't even talk. So what is the name of your documentary series? Uh, most probably the resilience element. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the uh, Renee and Akira were in discussion right now. Uh, they love it. And uh, yeah, there's magic to, to happen. It's already done. I remember the future to use uh, Joel Dispenza's work. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's great. So where um, can people connect with you? Uh, definitely on the website. We will put more, uh, more information, resilienceelement.com or theresilienceelement.com. Our goal is to interview actually people from around the world because we think that resilience is not just in North America. That's needed everywhere. Mental illness, depression is a big thing uh, for everyone. The social pressure in the world for jobs being automated with AI, whatever it is. So we, we want to interview a lot of different peoples in the world. So the, the, my image, the way that I see and I remember the future is the day we're going to launch is a day that, you know, when you have the happy new year and it starts in New Zealand and you see the sunrise. So it's going to mm -hmm. be that switch that's flicked. And then the whole sunrise starts to happen all around the world. And we get stories from very beautiful people that we don't know yet. And uh, we're going to be inspired from I cannot wait for it. That's amazing, man. And how about on social media? Where can people find you? Uh, at Piche Francis is uh, Instagram and uh, social media. What else? Like and Facebook. Piche is P-I-C-H-E. Yes. And there's no accent on it, unfortunately. But you, if you read my real name, Piche. Piche is <laughs> accent aigu for the people that <laughs> remember their French lesson. Yeah, Which, yeah. by the way, I don't know if I should say that, but I found that uh, women, when they say accent aigu, is extremely sexy and it doesn't mean anything. It's just an accent on the E. <laughs> accent aigu. Uh, it's very nice. I don't know why I say that. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> on that note.
All right, my uh, my man, I really appreciate your time and your insights your and your work and your impact on the world and your vibe uh, after always it's true for me that after I experience you, even if it's 45 seconds, nonetheless, 45 minutes, I feel like it, uh, my vibe has significantly elevated. So I thank you for that. I thank you on behalf of the listeners and the viewers for making time for this and, and sharing that vibe and, uh, and all the wisdom that you just dropped. So, and I will, if I made a note, I want to do another one of these down the road. And Absolutely. Uh, so if you're down with that, uh, I would love that. I'm done with that. And thanks for the viewers. And I have to say they're so lucky to hear you and have the daily dose. If they don't have the daily dose every day, they should, they must, they, they, it's a, it's a magic to happen. It's a 30 seconds read that I I'm so glad. I don't know why, but I, I'm your best advocate on this. I love it. You I, inspire I me every day. So we should, we should everyone just do it now. Do it. <laughs> I appreciate that brother. All right, man. Talk to you soon, bud. Talk to you soon, CD. Whew, right on, Francis. I did something else. I told you, right? I told you about his vibe. He's high vibing. <clears throat> I can't wait to see his documentary. You know, and I love that he's like, he just, just kind of whisked right over, you know, the, the fact that he went out and just without any hesitation reached out naturally, like, duh, of course I'm going to reach out to Louis Schwartzberg to have him participate in this. And, and that, you know, I don't know if the guy's going to, if he, I can't remember if you even got, ever got in touch with Louis, but uh, at this point, Louis is not participating. But the point, the value of that is that, of course, I'll ask. Why would I not ask? Ask, ask, ask. It doesn't matter how famous someone is. If they, if they could make a contribution here, let's ask him. So <clears throat> the five elements of creating a badass life, clarity, conviction, certainty, commitment, and courage. What do you see? Uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna visit with him again and, and, and elaborate on the certainty part. Like he was talking about Einstein, um, asking the. You know, one of the best questions you ask, you can ask yourself is is the universe friendly? And uh, he, he and I both share the belief. Uh, hell yeah, it is. He meaning Francis. I think Einstein as well. Um, he mentioned remembering the future. He. Uh, oh, you know, I forgot to ask him. Uh, go to his website on you know, resilienceelement.com. Oh, I forgot to ask him about it. He's hosting a retreat. He, he had a retreat, a resilience element retreat in Italy last year. This year it's going to be Greece and Croatia. So that's on his website, Retreat 2020 is the tab, I believe. It's not about bouncing back. It's about bouncing forward. Yeah, so that was good stuff. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, thanks for tuning in again as always. And uh, until next time, create miracles.